Welcome everyone into the Gamer Professor and today we're going to cover the Xbox Live and Xbox Gold increase, the 180 reversal and kind of just why I think it happened. I do want to say this though, is that this is, a, is like the idea that as soon as I read some of these articles and I go, whoa, and I have that gut reaction, I go, I have a 48 hour rule in place where I'm like, I need to wait 48 hours see how this is received, see where we go from here. Because I think, and a lot of times with these big stories, there's a definitive argument that like, um, this, I don't think this is going to go. So I always wait for that initial reaction wave to see and measure like, okay, how bad is this going to be? How good is this going to go? Is it going to go through blah, blah, blah. And this is one of the perfect examples of waiting 48 hours <laughs> kind of showed us, showed us a lot. So anyway, from a GameSpot article, now we're going to go through the original article and then we'll go through this update. But let's go ahead, coming from the main article, GameSpot.com, Microsoft reverses Xbox Live gold price increase, unlocks free-to-play games for everyone. Responding to an avalanche of negative feedback, and this is not the first time, and I'll share that later, Microsoft announces that Xbox Live gold is not getting more expensive. Now let's scroll down, and we're going to look through the original um, story here, when it first happened. Xbox Live, and again, from the same article, but posted when it first happened. Xbox Live Gold is about to get more expensive for some people. Microsoft confirmed on Friday that the cost of a one-month subscription is going up by $1 USD, while three-month subscriptions will now cost five USD more. The new pricing structure for Xbox Live Gold will be as follows. One month, $11. Three months, $30. Six months, $60. So stop there. Number one, six months is $60. Right now, and the original pricing plan was 12 months for $60. So this is a completely like double the amount, right? And that's where I think most people really had an issue. It wasn't that, that you know, one month costs $1 more. That's incremental and that's not a problem. But to double the price, $120, that was, I think, the catch point where people said, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, on top of that. This is, as we read from the article, this is only a little bit less than a Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which is priced as follows. One month, 15, three months, $45. Now that is priced a little bit more, but that being said, as I said earlier, Sony's PlayStation Plus service is now priced much lower than Xbox Live Gold if you're not renewing a membership. One month, 10, three months, 25, and 12 months, as Xbox Live was, Gold was originally $60. Now, first off, why would they do this? <clears throat> I think one of the biggest keys was, now I, I, do, I will say a couple of other things, but I think one of the biggest keys that they looked at was, number one, we want to funnel, and they've been doing this in a lot of areas, not with just promotions, but I think this was the next step. They've been wanting to funnel people towards the Game Pass. They've been wanting to funnel people to go over to Game Pass. Now, first off, it was, you know, huge promotional cuts, right? Like, if you haven't even had Game Pass, I mean, you can, I think you can get three months for a dollar. Usually, it's discounted around the holidays, right? I, you know, I got a three month instead of $45. I got it for like $20. So again, that's number one. That's the number one way they're trying to get people in, hey, deep discounts. Number two, which I don't think was a good bet, was this idea that if you have gold, then you're going to get all these games. Not only will you have access to the new games, but you'll have all these other games that you can just, you know, have to own. So that way, if you have Ultimate, which wraps in with gold, right, they, they combine, then not only will you get access to a library of games, right, and new games that come out on day one, right, big titles, but also you'll have access to a bunch of games every month through the gold, right, Xbox Live games with gold, and then you can download those and keep those. And you'll see that this upcoming month in Xbox Live Gold Games, this is one of the first months where randomly, I swear, the games that they release are actually some really like good games, like Gears of War, right? Resident Evil Remake. Like these are more big title, triple A sort of games. A lot of times, and especially if you go over the last six months, some of the games that they have released with the Xbox Live games with gold have just been like, what? Like, where are you picking these games up? Like, I could get this for 50 cents online. Like, pe like I, I just don't understand. So, again, first off, key number one. Hey, we want to follow them over to the Ultimate. 
and that way we can wrap it into the gold. Now, what happened? So here's the updated from, from the same article. Microsoft pulled a 180 overnight and announced that it is reversing its planned Xbox Live Gold price increase. The, subscri the subscription will not get more expensive, and free-to-play games are getting unlocked for everyone to play for free without a subscription. In the end, things are actually cheaper overall than before. Sometimes customers' feedback is heated. Sometimes, I'll give you the number one example where this really did work, and it was Microsoft as well. Moving forward, <clears throat> according to industry analyst Daniel Ahmed, the decision to make free-to-play multiplayer truly free was in the works for months. And the response to the news of the price increase was just a catalyst for announcing it. But this doesn't change the focus Microsoft is going to continue putting on Game Pass. Again, funnel towards Game Pass. That's a big sticking point, especially with the acquisition of ZeniMax, right, Bethesda. You'll still get gold included in Game Pass Ultimate. You'll also still get games with coal games with gold through the stir through the service so that again you can download those games and keep them it's not just like game pass like you can download them and then they're yours now microsoft statement says this we messed up today and you were right to let us know connecting and playing with friends is a vital part of gaming and we fail to meet the expectations of players who count on it every day as a result we have decided not to change xbox live gold pricing we're turning this moment into an opportunity to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the player at the center of their experience. For free-to-play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We are working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible in the coming months. And then they ended out with, if you are an Xbox Live Gold member already, you state your current price for renewal. New and existing members can continue to enjoy Xbox Live Gold for the same price as they pay today. US, 10 bucks for one month, 25 for three, and then... 40 for six months and 60 for retail 12 months that's the key right so that was big sticking point it's double the price now phil spencer came out and said apologies for all the angst and emotion this cost today for our customers as always we appreciate the feedback this is a good learning opportunity for us and we will learn from it now <clears throat> i want to end on this with with the the this quote and then or not this quote from the article Microsoft's planned price increase was seen by some as targeted move to encourage people to sign up for the relatively better deal of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Absolutely it was. Clearly, people did not like that idea, and Microsoft has now reversed course and pledged to do better in the future. So, beyond all of that, beyond all of what has happened here, I think the key is people forget. This is one of another, and again, Microsoft is 0 for 2 here, one of the best examples of consumers having the ability to choose, and therefore making the industry listen to them. Remember, consumers, we vote with our wallet, right? Anytime you buy a product, you are technically casting a vote for that product, for their, uh, you know, how they make the product, the quality of the product, etc. I think people forget when the Xbox One was announced, the original Xbox One, right? When it first was announced, and it started getting closer. Remember, Microsoft had a lot of ideas about how it was going to work as it relates to the digital right management argument. That you were not going to be able to just, if you had a disc and you put it in your Xbox One. And then you tried to take that disc over to your friend's house to play in there. Uh, no, it wouldn't work. Only one disc, disc per person. You had to be connected to the internet at all times. They wanted, again... Just like what they tried to do here with, with funneling people, what they tried to do back then was funnel the, the money from the secondhand market. They didn't want GameSpot or GameStop, sorry, to you know get a share of product. They didn't want there to be a used market out there that they were seeing no revenue from. So they tried to funnel people through digital right managements and other things to, you know, hey, it, you're going to have to abide by all these rules. And remember, Sony capitalized that on that. I remember that one you know, that, that commercial of how to share your disc with a friend from Sony. And it has the guy sitting there and then he, get, he hands it over to the other guy. And the other guy's like, Hey, here it is. Like, right. Again, totally poking fun at them. But the key is, is that Microsoft over, I think it was about four or five days, got such an avalanche of just like with this one, negative feedback, consumers saying, because they hadn't bought the console yet saying, if you do this, I'm not buying your, your console. I'm not going to vote for you. I'm not going to do this. 
And again, because the consumers in mass spoke up, and I will say this about the gaming community, when we kind of get on it, I mean, when the gamers get angry, they kind of come out of the woodwork, right? When they came out and said, we're not going to buy this Xbox, Microsoft back then did a 180 said, okay, you know, you can play your disc in another friend's, you, you don't have to be connected to the internet all the time, right? Like they went through a complete reversal because of the outcry from the consumer. And that's why, again, I think the ability as a consumer to choose is key, to be able to voice your opinions, and especially in this day and age in social media, it's, it's also very, very helpful. But, I mean, I think it's important for everyone out there, and this goes beyond just gaming, but that you should make your voice heard because I promise you, it's not just with a business, but these are the best examples. When you make your voice heard, there's a better chance that they will hear it. And when they hear it along with a thousand, five thousand, I mean, I don't know how many people tweeted back or how many people sent in a letter or how, you know, an email. I don't know, but I bet it wasn't just three people. And at some point, and there's always this subjectivity of when that tipping point is, there's always this point where then it makes the impact you want. And that's why I think this is a great example, but also it's a repetition of history, right? Again, they, they tried to implement all these things and they tried to change things for people when it came to the original Xbox and they fought back. Same here. They tried to change things as it relates to Xbox Live uh, and Xbox Live Gold. You know, people fought back. Again, people who do not learn from history are inevitably doomed to repeat it. And we have seen that today with Microsoft and the Xbox Life Gold fiasco. So I will say at least good on Microsoft. But then again, when you've got maybe 30,000 angry emails, it seems about in line with what, you, what you're probably going to do. Reverse course. So anyway, just my two cents today. Thanks for tuning in to The Gamer Professor. You have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much for watching The Gamer Professor. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave me a comment below. Anytime you want to talk to me, feel free to catch me on all my other social media platforms, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. Remember, all one word, The Gamer Professor. Thanks so much for the view. Take care.